So let me tell you that if someone calls you a punk, someone calls you a bitch, a rat, a catch out, a snitch, someone says any of those words to you, you have an option. You can either hit them now or you can stab them later, but you better by God do something because if you don't, whatever they said is assumed to be true. And from then on, people are going to take anything you get. Everybody's going to run over you. They will take anything that you happen to stumble upon. Your family sends you some money. They'll take that away from you. They'll leave you. They'll come to your cell. They'll beat you up. They'll take your shit. Whatever your mom sent goes to someone else, and you wear a black eye for getting it. So that's prison politics. Somebody calls you a punk, you got no choice but to do something. So the lab we were on, we're in the day room, but there's a rotunda, and there's a bunch of day rooms. A, 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 B, A, C, A, B, A, E. It goes all the way to A, G. So there's seven day rooms on each unit. So once an hour, they'll have five minutes where you can move to a different day room if you want. And then you're locked back in there for another hour till count time at night when they lock it all down. So this dude calls me a punk, so I didn't say a fucking word, dude. I just stood up, left the day room. Everybody knew I was going to get a knife. So I go to try to get my ice picks. I've got two ice picks hidden in the mop closet over there. But the guard stood there and wouldn't let me get my ice pick. So I end up with this piece of shit knife. It's about this big. And it's made out of a light. So how do you make it out of a light? Okay. So the way you make a knife out of a light is you take a pair of toenail clippers and you break them apart. And then you just take that pair of toenails and you scrape that metal over and over and over until you can bend it and break it loose. And then you can sharpen it up and make it into a knife. So a piece of plexiglass from around the light is what you mean? No, the metal. Oh, the metal. Yeah, we'll take the fingernail clippers and scrape that metal until you can bend it. Then we'll break it loose and sharpen it on concrete and sell. You know, wrap around some sheen around it for a handle. You got a little homemade shank. So when I come walking back in the day room, this dude just sitting out there on the couch in his flip-flops. Well, he didn't think I'd do shit. He still got his flip-flops on. He didn't even put his tennies on. Everybody said, man, we can die. going to get a knife. He's like, he ain't going to do shit. So I come walking in the day room. I got that knife in my hand like this. I got a sweatshirt in my hand so you can't see it. I come walking up there. I walk up to him and I said, hey, brother, man, I ain't never disrespected you. Don't you ever call me a punk again in real life? If he would have just said, okay, or that, you know, if he would have just let it go, I wouldn't, pull, I wouldn't have stabbed him. But instead, he looks up at me, does his mouth like that, says, man, you better get away from me with that bitch ass shit. Now, when he said that, I grabbed that sweatshirt and started stabbing the shit out of him. He started screaming. He's got a knife. Somebody help me. He's got a knife. So he was trying to get the black dudes involved, but I had a black dude with me watching my back. And he was like, no, y'all let him go where I want. So I ended up stabbing that dude here in the arm. I tried to stab him in the chest, and he, he turned, and I caught him here in the arm. And he bent my knife. But I didn't know my knife was bent. So I'm still trying to stab him with it. I hit him underneath the arm. I hit him twice in the chest. Hit him one more time, that pie around his shoulder. So I thought he was really fucked up. There was blood everywhere from his arm. So finally, I got my arms around him like in a bear hug. He, was, he grabbed the hope of my arm like this with both hands. And he turned my hand for all he's worth, dude, because I got that knife in his hand. And he kind of touched it and grabbed me like this. And I'm hitting him with my left hand. said, let the fucking knife go. Let, it, let the motherfucking go. Trying to get my hand loose, but he ain't letting that hand loose, you hear me? So finally, this black dude that was with me comes over and says, hey, man, let me have the knife for the police show up. Because at any time, the police can just look down and see us from the bubble. So he gets the knife. My partner gets the knife and leaves with it. But whenever he gets the knife, they're like, now y'all go ahead. I'm like, go ahead, shit. This motherfucker, I would have never grabbed the knife if I was going to fire it, shit. I end up on top of that dude choking him out, dude. But uh, that, was, that was scary, bro. It was scary. Let me tell you that people think, oh, if you get a knife, you just automatically win. But it ain't like that, bro. When you go after somebody with a knife, one of two things are going to happen. One, they're going to try to run. The other one is they're going to fight for their life. And if they choose that, man, you're in for it, buddy. You better be for real or you'll get that knife took away from you because people got adrenaline when you're after them with a knife. And, and the thing is, that all started over a word. And that's... And, and the reason I like talking about this stuff, the reason I like you talking about this stuff, because they have people that come across these videos and watch these videos. It might be some kid who thinks it's cool to have that reputation that he's been to prison. Well, he's a tough yeah, guy. and it's not. It don't mean shit. Over a word. Now, somebody in, in 
and that's another thing about coming out after being institutionalized for so many years. People say that shit all the time. Oh, shit. U.S. Do it, pop. Shut up, bitch. Talk and out here, there's no, there's no consequences for your actions out here. No, because you can't. Yeah, and you can't threaten. Can't threaten to. So it was a shock to me, bro, to go from a place where I had no choice but to fight over the least little thing because of what everyone else might think about me. And then come out here in a place where I'm not allowed to even threaten to fight. You know, it's real shock for me. Well, and here's it's something that obviously is implied in your stories is that your reputation is everything. You got to be in there for 20 years. You don't want to have to be fighting every day all the time. Yeah, you, getting your shit. Yeah. And then, so you got to make an example out of people. And you got to yes. show them that you ain't going to tolerate that shit. That there's going to be know a what my, immediately. You know what? When I first would go in there, bro, when I first, I, I, I've been in over 60 fights, I, I know. And, and a lot of them fights, I, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't hit hard enough to knock nobody out. But I was real good at wrestling and I didn't smoke. So I would just keep wrestling with them until they were tired, and then we would end up stop fighting, you know. But after I had been locked up for about four or five years, and I realized I'm going in the cell with these guys, they're hitting me a few times, then I wrestle them down when the fight's over, but they don't have no marks on them, and I got marks on me. It looks like I lost. So, I, so what I started doing was, once I took them out, I had bet them in the face three times once I took them out. Leave you have bet them in the face three times. They come out of there with two bright eyes and a broke nose, and they don't know how that shit happened because they were unconscious. And it scares the shit out of them. And then everybody leave you alone because they say, well, look at that dude that he got in a fight with. And you've got to do that. You've got to make your mark. Or, or like you said, just going to get your shit took over and over and over. Well, and that's, you see people watching us who have no experience with that might think of like, that is fucking insane. That's the levels of violence that you have to go through just to keep a semi-normal day-to-day life while you're locked up. Yeah. And then how insane it seems, that's just a normal Tuesday in the prison. Yeah, that was just a, that was over that was just a day over the TV. Argument over the TV. Things happen all the time. Happens but I've seen it happen over a microwave, you know, over the showers. Who wants the last shower before lockdown? You just, anything that, that people have to share. And you can't let anyone get away with anything. You know, out here you might be talking to somebody and they might say something sarcastic and you just kind of let it go. Well, in prison, if someone does that, does something sarcastic, you've got to put it in check. You can't let it go. The difference is that here, out here, out here, if you get into it with someone, you never have to see that person again. But in prison, you have to see them again tomorrow. And every day after that. So there's nowhere to go. You're in constant, like if, like out here, if I got into it with my neighbors next door, there's a good chance I can stay away from them. We're not sharing a microwave and a TV. But in prison, you can't stay away from your neighbor. 